In part one of this problem, what we're going to want to do is come up with an expression for the speed v sub f. We know that the ball is dropped from rest and therefore has an initial velocity of zero meters per second. It falls a vertical displacement of h and then it reaches the ground level. We can use the following equation from kinematics to solve for that final speed. We're going to be plugging in some key values right now. The initial velocity, as noted, is zero. So this zero squared essentially will cancel out. Then we have plus two multiplied by the acceleration. Now, an object that is falling freely vertically downward has an acceleration equal to g. So we're just going to symbolize that by g for now. You may recall the value is 9.8 meters per second squared. This says delta x, but because this object is moving vertically, we would say delta y. And the delta y, the vertical displacement, is simply the height of the building. So we're just going to put h right there. So now we have the final speed squared is equal to 2 times g times h. And then we're going to take the square root on both sides to solve for v sub f. And we end up with the final speed expression of square root of 2gh. This is not the answer to the question yet, but it's going to be a key value. Let's go back to the picture and understand what the question truly is asking. Okay, so here we have, again, someone dropping the ball from the window. The initial velocity is, again, zero meters per second. But then down at the ground level, we have another person throwing the ball straight upward. And the question noted that that person down at the street level threw that ball with that same speed, vf. Now you'll remember that the vf we calculated was this expression square root of 2gh. And so what we're saying is that the initial velocity of this green ball down at street level is actually that expression, that square root of 2gh. Now, as the red ball falls downward and the green ball ascends upward, at some point they're going to actually pass one another, and that's the point that we're interested in right now. We need to find the time that that takes place. To do that, we've selected another equation from kinematics. You may recognize this from this chapter in the textbook. We've taken delta y and we've expanded it as a final y-coordinate minus an initial y-coordinate. We've done that for the red ball as well as for the green ball down below. And we've also included subscripts of 1 and 2 to represent the red ball and the green ball, respectively. Now, for the red ball, we can begin to plug in some information. We are looking for the final y-coordinate, so we're just going to say y1 right now, minus the initial y-coordinate. Now, the ball was dropped from that height h, so we can actually fill in h for that value right here. The initial velocity is zero, so this term is going to cancel out. And then we have one half multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity, which is negative g. It's negative because gravity is accelerating the ball downward. And then multiplied by some unknown time squared. We'll actually add h to both sides of this equation. We'll cancel it out on the left side. So we have an expression right here for the final y-coordinate of the first red ball. We're going to do the same thing with the green ball. Again, we don't know the final y-coordinate, y2. We know the initial y-coordinate is 0 because the ball was thrown from the ground level. This equals that initial velocity, which again is that square root of 2gh multiplied by the time t plus 1 half times the acceleration due to gravity. Even for a ball that's thrown upward, as it's traveling upward, it's technically in free fall, so it's still accelerating at a rate of negative g. And then this is times t squared. The minus zero over here doesn't really matter, so here is the expression for the final y-coordinate of that second green ball. Again, when the balls pass each other, they're going to have the same y-coordinate, the same sort of location along the y-axis. So what that means is that the y1 and the y2 are going to equal each other. So that's the key right there, is to set y1 equal to y2. So we're going to be taking these expressions. Let's see if we can copy and paste them. And basically, we're going to be setting them equal to each other. And now the challenge that we face is to solve for the time. That's what we're going to be trying to do right now. Let's take a look at both sides of the equation. There is something very convenient here that you may notice. This term right here and this term on the other side are identical which means that they effectively cancel each other out algebraically. So we can cross those two terms off right there, 
And then we are in great shape to solve for the time because all we need to do is divide both sides by that expression square root of 2gh. And that is lovely because now we just take the height and divide that by the expression radical 2gh. That's going to give us the time at which the two balls cross one another. The height of the building was 28.7 meters, or at least that was the height of the window. So we're going to fill in 28.7 meters divided by the square root of 2 times 9.8 meters per second squared, and then again times the height. We will pick up our calculators and we will carefully punch this in. And when we do so, we should get a time of about 1.21 seconds. So this would indeed be the correct answer to part A. Let's see what's going on in part B. In part B, the question asks, at what location do they pass each other relative to the window? And basically, because it says relative to the window, we're actually searching for that distance d. There's a couple of ways we could do that, but perhaps one way we could select is to figure out this y coordinate here. Remember, this is y1. This is the final y coordinate of the red ball as it passed the green ball. If we could find y1, then all we have to do is subtract that from h, and that would give us the value of d. So let's go ahead and grab this expression for y1 and we're going to be plugging in all of our known values. So there it is right there. We'll call this y1. We're going to start plugging in. So y1 is equal to 1 half multiplied by negative 9.8 meters per second squared times the time, which we luckily just figured out 1.21 seconds squared, plus that initial height, which was the 28.7 meters. And if we punch that in, we're going to get a final y coordinate for that red ball, and I suppose the green ball as well, of 21 and a half meters, roughly. But the question again wanted relative to the window, so if you go back and look at the picture, we're looking for that distance d beneath which the ball has fallen, and that from the picture can be easily found by taking the height and subtracting y1. So in essence, we can say that d is equal to the height minus that y1. We would just take that height of 28.7 meters and subtract the 21.5 meters that we just figured out. And when you do that, you're going to get about 7, well, let's see, 28.7 minus 21.5, yeah, about 7.2 meters. That would be the correct answer to part B.